Good morning. Welcome to a day in my life as a victim advocate. I'm currently at the office. It's not even 8.30. I'm about to go in and prepare some stuff to do some DVPOs today. Um, and maybe just check the court calendar. And my favorite part is always looking at the jail bookings. It's a Monday, so the weekends are always pretty busy since a lot of people want to show their tales during the weekend. So I'm going to go and look and see if there's anybody that we know that has been booked this past weekend. I have you in kind of a weird angle because I just, I don't have anything to set you up on. But, um, can't even see what I'm doing, can you? Um, all I'm doing is basically going through court calendars and, um, potentially jail bookings just to see if anybody that we know such as potential abusers or even victims sometimes you might see a victim <laughs> in the jail bookings but um i personally haven't had that happen to me but you know you, you never know but um especially since today's a monday i think i've said that already before but for some reason since it's, it's just because the weekend happens people just go crazy and so we come back to work on monday morning and we look and we see you know not even just people that are like work related but like people that you know especially me because um i'm younger i'm on, i just turned 21 but i go to the university here and sometimes it's like that guy looks familiar and it's like oh we had a class together or you know or like i've seen him like out you know just walking around town or like if you've gone to a bar or something i mean sometimes you just know these people are you know familiar faces but um i was supposed to have a dvpo come in today she did not show it's perfectly okay but since she did not show, I basically don't have anything like set. There are things that I have to do. I make myself a to-do list every day because sometimes there's a lot to keep up with. But um, most of the time, a DVPO will take up half the day. And since we don't have one today, it's not really like a set schedule for me. I can just kind of call my clients, see what's up remind them of court dates that they have coming up. I can um, see if they need anything, if they've thought about doing counseling anymore because we do have um, in-house counseling and they're awesome. All of our counselors are great. But um, yeah, I can just kind of do my thing. If I had had a DVPO today, I would have had to have gone to the courthouse and Maybe y'all can see that one day, but for now, I'm just going to take you through what I do in a slow day as a victim advocate. Don't get me wrong, today might be slow, but that means someday soon, it's, it's going to come back to bite us. <laughs> I mean, you can have like a really slow day like today, which is great every once in a while. But that means that one day it's just all gonna come together and every single one of us will be busy. But that's a good thing, we wanna be busy. But still, it's just kind of funny how it works out sometimes. Maybe later I will take you to go get some coffee with me. So I went 
And I got my red hair. I will get you a pause. It is amazing. Let me just look. Just, it's called a cinnamon roll latte. I've never had it iced before, but it's like 87 degrees today. So, I'll give it a rating and see if it's better than like the hot version. Honestly, I love iced coffee. I think iced coffee is amazing. That is my lunch half the time. But when I go to this specific place, I do always get hot because for some reason I feel like at Starbucks, the iced coffees are better than the hot. But at this like local coffee place, every hot coffee I've ever had is better than an iced version of it. So I don't know. I mean, it's still good. I'm still going to consider it my lunch and I'm still going to, you know, down it in five minutes. Let there be no confusion about that. But I will say the hot version wins. I mean, I just wonder if like what the difference is. But either way, this coffee place is amazing. I will be hiring them for my wedding whenever that does happen. Okay, since the day is almost done and the essentials are almost gone, let's just end with a little chat. Basically, I wanted to start this channel because when I was trying to learn about being a victim advocate, specifically a court services advocate, there was nothing. Literally nothing. Like, I would type in victim advocate, day in a life, or ways that people entered into this field and there was nothing. Especially for entry type levels, I could not find anything. So I literally had to start all on my own. When I was 18, my freshman year of college, I shadowed at a domestic violence center in my hometown. I think COVID hit. So I didn't get much experience there. And I was going to shadow the advocates who work there and learn more about like the different types because there are many different types of victim advocates. I mean, there are medical victim advocates. Um, there are just crime advocates in general, children advocates, sexual assault advocates, and like me, domestic violence advocates. And I just had no information or guidance on where to go from my school or I couldn't find anything on the internet and that's actually odd because you would think that you could find anything on the internet but I guess victim advocacy isn't that big of a career field. I mean, we don't get paid well so not a lot of people do it but um, anyways, so I shattered at one domestic violence center in my hometown. COVID hit and then I actually got a job at the domestic violence shelter and I was the staff at the shelter for 48 hours by myself. It was just me. I was there from Saturday 8 a.m. to Monday 8 a.m. And during that time, I was only 19. <laughs> I was kind of scared, but um, I would stay there overnight obviously. And if there were clients there, I would talk to them about their situation. If they wanted counseling or resources, or if they wanted, you know, to talk about what actually happened, I was just there to be a supervisor and a listening ear if they wanted it. But I would also pick up the crisis line and whatever calls came, whether it was at two o'clock in the afternoon or two o'clock in the morning, I had to answer it. And sometimes that was scary, <laughs> especially for a girl with anxiety. But um, it was a really great learning experience cause, because whenever I wasn't in the shelter, they allowed me to work in the actual office as an advocate there in the front. And so that was my summer job. And I'm currently a senior at the university here for criminal justice. And in my last semester, right before I graduate, I'm required to do an internship. 
and it's full time. I'm in New York 415 hours. So I started here in January as their intern for court services and I basically just got to do the basics. I wasn't allowed to put in any really specific data or do anything that an employee or like an advocate is specifically supposed to do. Like I could call clients and do basic things, but nothing that was, you know, serious. But it was still great to learn. But um, one of the advocates here actually left and I'm still sad about it, but um, she was great. But since my internship ended, I ended it pretty early, like it wasn't even April, but they offered me a position here as the direct services advocate. And it's been great. I loved it, or I, I do love it, but I just love being here in general. It's honestly the most chaotic environments to work in. If you thrive in chaos, this could potentially be the job for you. I mean, like, we have appointments. We do our best to do things by schedule. Like, I had a GDPO for 9 o'clock today. She just happened not to come. But some days we do get walk-ins, and some days we have crisis calls, and some days we have people who come in that have absolutely nothing to do with domestic violence. But that's okay. Domestic violence is like our specialty, but I, we help anyone that we can, but um, chaos sounds so negative, but in this setting, it's a good thing because you want to be busy, like you want to have people to help. If there's no chaos, then you're not doing anything. and. The whole goal of this organization and for advocates is to help people and so yeah I might have a DVPO that comes in randomly not scheduled has no idea what's going on and we might be rushing to make it to the courthouse on time but guess what that person could potentially just save their own life by you know coming in and doing a protective order or an ex parte. I mean, you just have no idea. I mean, things don't go as planned, especially with domestic violence and things like sexual assault and crime. I mean, things do not happen on a schedule. That's just not realistic. If someone decides to make an appointment to do it, that's cool. But if I get someone or if any of my coworkers get someone who just randomly decides, hey, like I really don't feel safe this organization is local, let me just go talk to them, potentially do an ex parte or a DVPO. That's fine. I don't care. They can walk in at 4.59 and I will help them. Any of my coworkers will do the same too. And it's just a good job. I mean, like I have a whole second phone for my clients because I mean, this it's not like being a police officer where, you know, you're up all through the night and you know you're um that you're going to calls you know it's not like that but you are technically on call for your clients because what if they receive a random call from some number and they think that it's their abuser or um they're getting threatening phone calls or messages or they simply just have anxiety about court I mean, you answer. This isn't the kind of job that you pick and choose. Like, you know, your hour, your hours do technically stop at five, but you're gonna have clients where you're just gonna have to answer. I mean, cause that is your job. If no one needs you after five, that's great. I mean, like that's what you want. You want your clients to not need you, but if they do, that's what you're here for. I mean, this is totally me going off into a rant, but like the whole point of being an advocate is to empower and just be there for your client. And the whole goal is for them to not need you. It sounds kind of weird that like our job is to, you know, help clients and victims get what they need and to explain things. But the end goal is that they don't need you anymore. 
there's supposed to be a point, whether it comes sooner or later, that your client never has to speak to you again. And that's sad, or at least it sounds sad, but that's the whole goal. And I have clients, like even like that I met as an intern, that I think about every day. I mean, they probably they might not think about me at all, but I have certain clients that I literally think about every day. I mean, I'm glad they don't need me. I'm glad they don't need my coworkers anymore. But you just connect with them on such a personal level because you're learning about this situation that happened to them. You almost have no choice but to emotionally connect. I mean, you don't want to be overly invested or involved, but sometimes you just need a client and you're like, I can't help but root for you. I think I will stop myself right here because if I don't, we will sit here for a whole other hour talking about domestic violence and victim advocacy. My boyfriend and my mom will 100% tell you that that will happen if I don't stop right now. But if you did make it to the end of this video, thank you so much. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe if you want. And if you are in danger of domestic violence, I'm going to list the National Domestic Violence Hotline number at the bottom of the screen. And I will also link down their website in case you are in danger and need to know about your local resources. And I hope y'all have a good day. Thank you.